So I'm out here in the garden and I'm going to harvest some of this curly leaf kale and some of our dinosaur leaf kale down there and I'm going to try to make some kale chips. Is that cabbage worm poop? These are the chickens. I've been hoping that since we had gotten some frosts that the pests would be dying. However, see that little green worm there? I just found a couple of the moths um, that were on some leaves that I just smushed. But there's a cabbage worm there. There's another one there. So the pests are not gone. There's even a cucumber beetle still, good grief like a little yellow ladybug and these um, attacked our fruit trees earlier this year too besides the Japanese beetles so yay despite all of the pest pressure we do have two broccoli plants that are producing broccoli right now somehow all right so to prep your kale for the kale chips you just want to cut the thicker ribs out of here and then just kind of tear it into bite-sized pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash up these kale leaves and spin them dry. Then you'll just wanna lay some of the kale pieces out on the kitchen towel and you'll want to pat them dry because they really have to be dry for this. have them completely dry. I'm going to toss them in a bowl that has just maybe a tablespoon or so of olive oil down at the bottom and just keep turning them, turning them, turning them until they are just they have a very thin coating of the olive oil on every single leaf. So both sides. A little oil goes a long way. So then we just arrange a little single layer on a baking sheet and we take a tablespoon of nutritional yeast and a quarter teaspoon salt and we just have some empty salt and pepper shakers here. You can just sprinkle it on by hand, you know, with your, with your fingers by going like this, but um, we put it in a little shaker to make it easier. And you can get nutritional yeast even on Amazon. Um, but at a health food store, I'm sure you can play around with all sorts of spices. So I'd start checking your oven at about 13 or 14 minutes. We kind of found our sweet spot in our oven at 325 at 15 minutes, but they're really crispy. So be really good with like garlic salts or other flavorings on there also. So our bean plants have been hanging up for a few weeks and the seeds, the pods are all crunchy, so it's time to shell these and get them put away for next year. So I'm going to go ahead and take down all of these plants and get shelling. So I'm going to go ahead and crack all these open and shell them. We had a mix of beans this year. We had um, some wax beans, 
different types of green beans and even the um, purple beans. In that pod there are only two and then there's this one weird little um, bean that didn't really mature. So I'm going to go ahead, get through all of these, and then I'll show you what we ended up with. I know it doesn't seem like we have a lot of bean seeds to plant in the garden next year, um, but I figure we'll still supplement these with some that we purchase. But we're working towards self-reliance and we can't always count on there being the okay. store to go and purchase bean seeds from. Something new and it's kind of fun, you know, you get to save, you know, get your hands dirty. So. Plus, um, you know, the longer you grow something in your particular climate, um, the plants start to do better. Um, they get more adapted to your environment, so every year they should be just a little bit better adjusted to our particular climate. So thanks for joining us today, and uh, until next time, take care. Bye.